Are you blurry? I don't know. I hope you're not blurry. <laughs>here with part two of my November wrap-up for 2018. I read a total of 13 books so part one has seven books and then this is part two which will have the last six books that I read for the month so without further ado let us get started. The first book I'm going to talk about in this wrap-up is Vasa in the Night by Sarah Porter and I really did not like this book. I give it a 1.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Vasa who lives in Brooklyn with her stepmother and two stepsisters and it also follows Baba Young who owns the local convenience store but she has the tendency to cut off the heads of shoplifters and stake them outside of her convenience store. When her mother died she gifted Vasa a talking wooden doll that has the urge to steal things and so when her stepsister sends her off to Baba Young's convenience store for some light bulbs, she's basically sending her to her death. I pretty much only liked two things about this whole entire story. First, I really like the idea of Erg because personally having a talking doll would be cool in my opinion. Like, then I could have a friend all the time. And I really liked the witty banter between Erg and Vasa. I thought they were really funny together. And then the second thing I liked was Sinister and Dexter. They were these two magic hands that ran the convenience store, but they were just like really creepy and I just really liked them. But that's pretty much the only two things that I liked about the entire story. Most of the time I was just frustrated because I was so confused and had no idea what was going on. Like, maybe I'm just not deep enough for this book because a lot of people do like it. For the most part I was just confused and it pissed me off so I really didn't like this book. I gave it a 1.5. The next book that I have is a graphic novel and it's called Kiss Number 8 and this is by Colleen A.F. Venable and Ellen T. Crenshaw and I loved this. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I don't think it's out yet. It's supposed to come out March 2019 so I got an advanced reader's copy from First Second so thank you to First Second but it is so good and I definitely recommend it when it comes out. It's about a girl named Amanda and her best friend Kat is very rebellious and she likes to have fun and she really likes kissing boys. So Amanda is wanting to fit in so she's had seven kisses in her life that have been unremarkable at best. But nothing can be as bad as kiss number eight and what follows afterwards. And to make matters worse, Amanda finds out that her family is hiding a very big secret from her, but they won't tell her what it is. So now with a secret of her own, Amanda is trying to navigate falling for her best friend while trying to figure out what her parents are hiding from her. I just loved this graphic novel so much. I loved Amanda. She dealt with so much in such a short period of time and just her character development was so well done. I really loved the themes that were explored in this and I loved watching Amanda grow into who she was and trying to navigate what that meant for not only her but those around her. I also really liked how the family secret was dealt with and how that was all handled. I think that it was done very sensitively. I think that a lot of people would react the way that the characters in this story acted so I really liked seeing that. I think that the character development of all of the characters was really well done, not just Amanda. Everybody grew in some way and I think that that was really nice to see and I also really liked that the ending wasn't perfect because that's how life is. Everything wasn't tied up in this neat little bow, like there were still problems and people were still dealing with things and I really liked seeing that. I also cried at the end which rarely happens with books for me so the fact that I cried was like a huge thing for me so definitely bumped the rating up. I also want to mention the art. I think that it was like really well done and the only complaint that I think I have is that it's black and white which personally like I don't really like black and white. I like having colors so I think if they had like included like the blues or like the little pops of colors like they did on the cover would have been cool but it actually worked for this story. I don't know if they're going to change it for the final copy and maybe add color but I still really enjoyed it. I think that, like, that's the only complaint I can find of this book, so I really enjoyed it. I highly recommend it. The next book I have is My Husband's Wife, and this is by Jane Corey, and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Lily McDonald and her new husband, Ed, who 
are recently married and they're trying very hard to make their marriage work. Lily is a lawyer trying to make her name and she's taken on her first case with a convicted murderer called Joe Thomas and she's very strangely drawn to him. The book also follows Cara who is a nine-year-old Italian girl who has a very hard time fitting in and one day she ends up on the McDonald's front porch and this kind of changes the course of both of their lives. Now 12 years later Cara finds herself back on on the McDonald's porch and it's kind of the story of what led them to that point. I was really excited to read this because I read Blood Sisters by Jane Corey and I thought it was such a good story so I had very high expectations going into this and I think that's what brought my writing down a lot. Although the plot was very obvious about what was going to happen I still really enjoyed the story for the most part. I really liked the alternating perspective between Carla and Lily and I liked how it started 15 years prior and then it eventually made it to present day. It was a bit slow in the beginning of the story but it eventually picked up as things were revealed and I can't particularly say that I liked any of the characters. They were all very unlikable and manipulative but they all had a purpose in the story so that was nice. It wasn't like any of them were just thrown in there for the sake of being thrown in there. So yeah overall I liked it but it wasn't amazing. I definitely would recommend Blood Sisters by Jane Corey before I would recommend this, but it was still a fun read. The next book that I have is Time Between Us by Tamara Ireland Stone. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows a girl named Anna who is from 1995 and she meets a boy named Bennett who changes her entire life because Bennett is actually a time traveler and he's from 2012. They were never supposed to meet, but when they do, they fall in love and shit goes down. I'm honestly not 100% sure how I feel about this book because it was enjoyable but it wasn't anything special like I didn't care about any of the characters but they were all relatable. Honestly I would have rather just had a story about Emma who was Anna's best friend. She was like super spunky and funny and I just liked her a lot more than I liked Anna. The story was cute but Ultimately, it wasn't anything memorable for me. Like, I'm not gonna want to pick up this book again anytime soon. The romance didn't do anything for me. Like, they were cute, but like, I didn't care about their relationship, which like this whole story, the whole point was them falling in love. So I kind of feel like that was a downfall. It was very slow for the most part. Nothing really happened. So I was kind of bored for most of it. So overall, like it was average, but it was cute. So it was enjoyable. I'm sure if you like romance books, you'll probably like this one, but just wasn't anything special for me. The next book that I have is called Before I Go to Sleep and this is by S.J. Watson and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows Christine Lucas who every day she wakes up not remembering anything from her life and so when she wakes up in an unfamiliar house beside a man that she doesn't recognize, he quickly informs her that she was in a terrible accident and that he is actually her husband named Ben. This terrible accident caused her to be unable to form new memories so she has to live her day every day from what Ben tells her. But she's secretly been seeing a doctor who has given her a journal to write in every day and basically write down everything that's happened to her. So as Christine rereads her journal every day, she quickly realizes that something isn't right and that maybe she can't trust Ben after all. Although the story is very predictable, I was able to call what was going to happen in the major plot twist. I still really loved this. I was was hooked from the minute I started reading it. It was really interesting because the whole story is told through Christine's journal entries and she is such an unreliable narrator and I personally just love unreliable narrators so much because they make me second guess everything which I personally love in stories. I think that things were pretty slow in the middle but it did eventually pick up closer to the end and a lot of things were very repetitive but it did make sense for Christine's situation. So I think those are the two major downfalls that I had for the book but it was still really addictive and I just needed to know what was going to happen next. And then the final final book that I have for this wrap up is All Is Not Forgotten by Wendy Walker and I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Jenny Kramer who was brutally raped one night and so her parents don't want her to deal with the trauma so they decide that she is going to undergo a new drug treatment that 
basically erases your memory for that specific event. So she enters into therapy in order to try to work through her emotional memories that she still has about the event, but dealing with the aftermath that she's unable to put her attacker behind bars. And then her parents are also dealing with that aftermath of not being able to find justice for Jenny and it's basically their story and the whole story behind the rape. The book is very intense and very, very graphic. So if rape is a trigger for you, like I would not recommend picking up this book because it is brutal. The choice of narrator was really unique. I've never seen a story told from this perspective. I don't want to give the perspective away because I think that going into it blind makes it a lot more intriguing in my opinion but I've never seen it done and I think that that definitely boosted my rating of this story. I was all over the place with my theories behind who committed the rape and what actually happened to Jenny and I loved every second of it because I was just so like, you know that meme of the guy with the board behind him and he's trying to connect all the dots? That was me during this book, but it was so well done and the whole writing style and the way the story was told and how everything interwove at the end was just amazingly done. So I definitely recommend this book for people who really like thrillers, but if rape is a trigger for you, like, do not pick this book up don't do it. <laughs> Alright guys, so that was the last six books that I read for the month of November. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!